Hey guys, welcome back to Katia's Buzz. Today I'm going to show you how you can save some bad shaky footage in two seconds. The Warp Stabilizer has saved a ton of footage from me. Everything that you do and held can have a little shakiness to it. You just put that on and it's smooth, it's beautiful, and it looks like you did it on a tripod. Usually this happens when you're filming something handheld and even though you may have the stabilizer on, it's always going to have a little bit of movement. Sometimes it's really bad, sometimes it's just enough that it can be perceived by the eye and so what you want to do is to smooth it so that it's not disturbing when you're watching a video. So let's find out how it's done. Let me take you to the computer and uh, go to Premiere Pro. I already have my footage here. I was working on a video on the accessories for the MacBook Pro 2020 and uh, I was just filming my desk with a handheld iPhone. And so what happens is you can see I'm slightly moving and I don't like that. I recommend you stabilize on very short videos or to be very patient because it's going to analyze your footage and so it takes a little bit of time and if you do anything to it, it has to analyze again and render again. So I recommend using it on small amounts of footage. So you pick the footage that you want, you go to your effects and you look for warp stabilizer. You just drag it onto your footage and you see here in the effects control automatically it showed up. Always bring it up. Do not put that at the very end of your effects. It's always best to bring it on the top just faster. Right now, as you can see, it's analyzing in the background. In the background means that if I want to continue working elsewhere, continue to edit and come back to it, that's perfectly fine. Every time you do something, you'll always have to remember to come back to that button analyze. Right now it's dead because it's analyzing, but later on it'll be active and you wanna make sure that you put that on. And as you can see, I put the in and out point around that footage so it only renders that particular file. All right, so we went from pretty a shaky footage and you'll see that when we're done with the rendering, it's going to be a lot better. Now, as you can see, I haven't touched anything yet. This is just the way it comes out of the box. So you see how smooth that was? You see how the desk looks perfectly straight in comparison to the previous version? Much better. I want to show you what the stabilizer has to offer. You're probably gonna just end up using the smoothness from 50, it's very high, so usually I tend to bring that down a little bit. All it does is it tells you how much of a stabilization you want on your footage. And so, of course, the more you ask to be stabilized, the more it's going to affect your video, the more it's going to cut the corners and do all kinds of things to it. If you just need it to be just very smooth and gentle, you just lower it a little bit and you'll still be a lot easier. So from 50, I'm going to take it, let's say 30. Et voila. On the result, there is smooth motion and no motion. By default, you get smooth motion. You can also go to no motion and that removes the camera motion from the shot. It mimics the looks of having your camera on a tripod. So you see that it's kind of preventing the footage from moving at all. If you were moving the camera, if you were in motion, when you decide to do no motion, it's going to do some really strange things. So make sure you only use this if you were really filming with the mindset of being on a tripod. Like let's say you're filming um, a race or something and you're looking at it, you're making sure that the camera is barely moving and you know that you're planning it to be as if it was on a tripod. Then it's a bit different because there is already no movement. So it's going to keep the frame exactly like that with no movement. That would be the time that you use that. So we're gonna go back to smooth motion. Then the method. The subspace warp, which is the default, is it tries to warp all the parts of the frame, is the most efficient one because it tries to stabilize your frame in as many possible ways as possible. So it's going to do the position, the rotation, the corner of the frame, 
perspective, scale, it's looking at all of these things. You have position, scale, and rotation. These are the three things that this warp stabilizer looks at in order to stabilize your footage. It's going to look at your footage and pick some points and make sure these don't shake and don't move too much. From there, it's going to change the position, the scale, and the rotation. And with those three things, it's going to make sure that it looks seamless. So if you use subspace warp, it's all of them packaged together. And it's usually the best option. The position only stabilizes the position. It's the most basic way to stabilize your footage. If you use perspective, the entire frame is corner pinned. You can control how the edges of the stabilizer appear in the frame. The borders adjust how the moving edges of your footage get stabilized. The default setting here is stabilize crop auto scale. With stabilizing only, it allows you to crop the footage. So I don't want that. When you use synthesize edges, it fills up the missing parts of the frame with footage from before and after. So again, I'm not really recommending you use that unless you really know what you're doing. And advanced. Detailed analysis, roller shutter ripple, enhanced reduction, automatic reduction, crop less, smooth more, synthesize input range, synthesize edge feather, synthesize edge cropping, and you can change all of these settings and go really deep into it. You can really spend a lot of time and just nitpick all those settings. Now, of course, rule of thumb is to always try to film uh, the original content the best possible way and then go in post-production and tweak things. But it always happens, you need it, and this tool is really a life savior. There are so many times where I got some footage, a little shaky, but it's really like what I want to use for whatever reason. And so without the stabilizer, it would be very difficult. You just, boom, plug that in there, done. So in the comments below, let me know uh, what you think of the stabilizer, if you use it often, and uh, if you've ever encountered difficulties, I'd love to hear about it. And uh, make sure you stick around. Uh, if you have a second, click like, subscribe if you want more videos like this. I think at some point I'm going to go through all the different effects on Premiere so that you know exactly what is available. But this is really something uh, that I needed the other day and I thought it was important to just share how easy it can be uh, to just fix shaky video. I hope you like this. See you next time. Welcome again to Katya's Buzz Quick Tips. Until the next round, have a wonderful day. If you enjoy the video tutorials, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and press like. I hope you'll come again. I will put more videos out there for you to be able to film better, edit better, do some graphic design all for the purpose of putting your YouTube channel in the best possible light.